The Emei Toad, know what the ladies like? Mustaches and big burly arms. The Emei Toad, Leptobrachium boringi of China, understands this all too well. For these frogs, their face fur is made of claws. During mating season, they grow a super stash on their upper lip that consists of 10 to 16 spines made of keratin. That's the same substance that claws and horns are made of. Their forearms also buff up. So what do they do with this wicked lip foliage? They fight, of course. Prime nesting sites are rare, and the big, pumped-up males fight over them by trying to stab each other with their stash spikes. Their muscular arms are used to lift up their opponents and bash them into rocks. As hardcore as this sounds, very few males die from the experience. Most just limp away with a few holes. But perhaps the most amazing thing about these males is how gentle they are. Once the female lays her eggs, the male is the one who stays to watch over them. And if one male ousts another, and there are already eggs in the nest, he'll watch those too. Even though it makes no evolutionary sense to take care of someone else's kids. Especially the dude you just stabbed and beat up. Polar bears aren't white. Sure, polar bears look white, but as the old adage goes, looks can be deceiving. The bear's outer hairs, called guard hairs, are actually see-through, and its undercoat is really colorless. So why do polar bears look white? Well, inside each guard hair is a hollow pocket of air. When sunlight hits a polar bear's outer coat, all of the wavelengths of light bounce off these air pockets, causing the polar bear to appear white. But even this classic look can change. Depending on the time of year and the position of the sun, polar bears can look yellow as well as brown. Sometimes the ones in captivity even turn green thanks to algae growing inside their guard hairs, but that wouldn't look so good on a soda can. However, if you shave away all that fur, something I strongly advise against, you'll discover the polar bear's true color. Under that shaggy, colorless coat, the polar bear's skin is actually black. This black skin absorbs heat from the sun, which keeps the bear warm in the cold arctic climate. So the next time you see a polar bear's nose, remember, that's his true color. Bizarre Chelonians Turtles and tortoises belong to the family Coloniae. In general, turtle is used to define water-loving members of the group. The dome-shaped, land-based colonians are frequently referred to as tortoises. These differences explained, the entire group boasts some exceedingly odd traits. Colonians may resemble a shellfish, but unlike the inert calcium carbonate shell of oysters, their carapace is actually a complex bone structure that evolved from their ancestors' ribcage structures. Otter still is the lack of a diaphragm for breathing. As a result, turtles cannot cough, making them vulnerable to infection. Vocal cords are absent, but hissing and bellowing sounds can be produced by air pressure in many species. Finally, certain species attract their prey by using their tongue as a worm-like lure. These ancient creatures offer a true multitude of novel and bizarre characteristics. Squirrels and Rattlesnakes The squirrels of California have spent the last 10 million years in an arms race with rattlesnakes, and they've come up with a couple clever ways to fend off the predators. They have fantastic reflexes and can react quickly enough to dodge a snake during the fraction of a second that it takes for the reptile to lunge. The snakes need to be sure they're attacking their potential meal with the utmost surprise or it's not worth the energy to leap out. Rattlesnakes sense their prey using infrared. If the squirrels notice the snakes first or enter an area where an ambush is likely, the rodent raises its tail and floods it with blood. This causes the tail to become warm, which stands out like a beacon to the snakes. While this may sound like literally the worst possible maneuver, the snakes recognize the gesture as a I know you're there so you're not going to surprise me, and so don't even bother to attack. The same squirrels have also come up with a way to deter predators that track using scent. They find a dead rattlesnake, chew its skin, and then lick themselves. This leaves the squirrels smelling like snakes, and scientists believe this tricks animals into thinking that the squirrel's burrows are actually home to a few feet of coiled, venomous danger rather than a tasty mammalian snack. Mute Swan the mute swan is one of the world's largest waterfowl, not to mention one of the most aggressive and territorial. The birds are native to Eurasia, but have been introduced to many other parts of the world, most famously North America. Mute swans, unlike other swan species, nest in park ponds, community lakes, and other sites frequented by humans, and defend their nest fiercely against potential predators. If a human approaches the lakeshore nest, the 26-pound bird will hiss and charge, the swan strikes its opponent with muscular wings that can span over seven feet and pecks and shoves until the threat is mitigated. Serious injuries, including broken bones, bruises, and eye injuries, can occur. In one tragic case, a property caretaker drowned after being pushed out of a kayak by mute swans his own company had established on a lakeside community. Surgeon fish. The roughly 100 species of surgeon fish inhabit shallow coral reefs worldwide, and some types are among the most beautiful tropical fish. However, a diver would be well advised to steer clear of these two foot beauties. For concealed in their tail is a naturally evolved switchblade, which the surgeon fish will not hesitate to use as it operates on intruders into its territory. 
A human who foolishly reaches for the fish or invades its section of the coral reef may suddenly be slashed by the blades, leading to amputation or severing of tendons or arteries. The blood loss could possibly be fatal to the unfortunate swimmer in of itself. But even worse, the wounds could attract an even more deadly reef shark. Holy Cross Frog Tearing a ligament is one of the most common orthopedic injuries, and unfortunately, less than 10% can be repaired with current techniques, which involve suturing. Fortunately, frogs may have an answer. The Holy Cross Frog, Notoden Benetai, of Australia produces the strongest non-toxic glue in the world. Holy Cross Frogs live underground for nine months out of the year. Since they live in a desert, they only come up when it rains. That's also when nasty biting insects come out to attack. With this gluey substance secreted all over the frog's skin, the insects can't bite the frog and instead find themselves trapped. Later, the frog sheds its skin and eats all of the flies that got trapped. This quick-drying glue might be the answer to a lot of problems for surgeons. By peeling the slime off one of these frogs, knee surgery might become quick and easy affairs. Most glues can't be used in the body because they're full of poisons. And all the non-toxic medical glues we have are pretty weak. But it was discovered that the secretions of the Holy Cross frog are both non-toxic and extremely strong. It also sets very quickly, in around 30 seconds in either open air or underwater. Soon, you might see pasty frogs sitting on the surgery table ready to ooze for you. African Ostrich The African Ostrich is the largest bird on Earth, and is the sole remaining ostrich species following the tragic extinction of the Arabian Ostrich. Ostriches average 240 pounds and may reach nearly 7 feet in height. The bird's long eyelashes and broad bills may appear comical, but a territorial ostrich is nothing to laugh about. Startled ostriches usually run, reaching speeds of 43 miles per hour, or flatten themselves close to the ground. But when their territory or young are threatened, they may attack humans. Ostriches have massive leg bones and hoof-like pointed nails extending several inches. A human target may be disemboweled or battered to death in seconds. In one region of South Africa, up to three attacks occur per year. A number of human deaths have resulted over the years from attacks following intrusions into ostrich breeding grounds. Giraffes and NASA Giraffes and space travel don't seem like an obvious mix, but they have actually contributed quite a lot to our travels in space. Weightlessness has always posed a number of problems to the human body. One of the most significant issues is the weakening of leg veins. Since the blood flows differently in space, the circulatory system of the legs doesn't have to put in so much work in order to pump the blood back up. The veins get lazy, thin, and weak, which can pose serious problems when returning to Earth. Giraffes have provided a solution to this problem. Baby giraffes learn how to stand almost immediately upon birth, thanks to their rapidly inflating leg veins. When NASA observed this, they were able to create the lower body negative pressure process. It's a device that consists of an airtight tube that seals around the astronaut below the waist and applies vacuum pressure, thus rapidly expanding the leg veins and making blood rush into the legs and pelvic area. When this pressure is applied at regular intervals, the astronaut's leg veins stay in shape. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.